By 27, I went from being a complete beginner who didn't even know how to read drawings to managing multi-million dollar construction projects for a billion dollar contractor. In this video, I'll be sharing my top tips and blueprint of my career thus far and how I was able to climb the ladder. And I am by no means God's gifts to construction, but hopefully this can help you do the same or even better in your own career. If you're new here, my name is Keenan and I'm a construction project manager and professional engineer. And we talk about the industry and just general life stuff on this channel. So if that excites you, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. So my first project as an intern, I was working on a precast elementary school project. I was very lucky to have a superintendent mentor. His name was Kyle Fujimoto. And he taught me the value of just being humble and supporting the field. Sometimes there's a tendency that I see that people that come from a college background think that maybe because they have their degree, maybe they're smarter than somebody that comes from the field. But as a superintendent, Kyle came up through the ranks, you know, starting as a carpenter, working up to a field supervision. He even worked for owners and he was just an all-knowing superintendent. So right out of the gates, he really showed me that even though I had my degree, I didn't really know anything. Even down to using the tape measure properly, there were so many things that I didn't know that school couldn't have prepared me for. And he set me straight right from the beginning. And I think keeping that humble nature, knowing that the field guys had a lot to offer and I could learn as much from them as they could from me and probably me learn more from them, that helped me create relationships with people from the field so they were more willing to teach me and help me grow throughout my career. This also helped me realize how important that relationship is between the field and the office on construction projects and how being a great engineer is just removing those obstacles so that the field can do their job as efficiently as possible. And I think operating in that frame from the beginning of my career really helped set me apart from some of my peers who didn't really have that outlook. And one of the tips that I have for you, so always try to consider what information would you need if someone told you you had to build that thing yourself. And when you think through that process of all the information that you need, it's usually the same information that your guy in the field is going to need as well. So I think when you have that in mind, the due diligence that you have to do in order to get to that point really helps put a good product out there for you and your team. So my first job after my internship was a nine figure luxury condominium project. And a lot of times entry level engineers get thrown on these jobs because it's a big team. You need a lot of people and you can kind of hide the newness of everybody because your team is so large. When you do have that large of a team, a lot of times you can get pigeonholed. Like you'll be an engineer for just rebar or you'll be an engineer for just glass or you'll be an engineer for just steel. And that can be a little limiting on your career, especially when those jobs last, you know, two years or so. So I think one thing that I did is I tried tried my best to understand the whole system. Even though at one point I was only doing concrete and rebar, I really tried to make a concerted effort to understand everything else that went into it. Why was this concrete slab edge in this location? Oh, it's because the glass needed to be there. Or how do we figure out these curb layouts? Oh, we looked at these architectural details and all these partitions, and that's how we were able to figure out where that curb went. And then because I didn't really have a lot of obligations at the time, I really put in a lot of hours to be able to kind of take on as much work as I could. So when my project manager needed somebody to take over some glass scope, I was able to take over that. And then after a while, another engineer left, so then I went to go help with the penthouse, so I learned a little bit of finishes. Then they needed somebody on the ground, so I was able to learn a little bit about civil work. So I know a lot of that can be a little overwhelming for a new engineer, but I think going through that process and just being willing to take on work and just try to learn, that really helped me jumpstart my career and then it gave me that reputation of somebody who was willing to try anything and just try to help the team. So even though you may be pigeonholed in one scope, don't just limit yourself to that. Try your best to learn every other scope because at the end of the day, you're building an entire building and understanding how all of that comes together is going to be the most important thing at the end of the day. And another key indication that you might be on the right path is that some of your sub traits that may not even be your sub they'll start coming to you for information because they see that you have a presence on site or they see that you're somebody that's digging into all the details and that's a spot where you want to be especially early in your career. The next job I did was a 20 million dollar hangar renovation and the one thing that I learned on that job was to challenge the status quo. On that project we had a specific project schedule. It was very detailed, people took a lot of time on it but I did notice that there were some issues with the sequence and the finishes. It wasn't as productive as it could be for the finished trades. Meaning that, that was my scope of work, I kind of challenged that schedule but I was told at the time that you know people had spent a lot of time on it just just let it be but I saw how inefficient some of those trades were working I took it upon myself to talk to the subs get everybody together collaborate and create our own sequence that worked for us and I think that was very valuable because I hadn't done a lot of finished work but I got to learn all the different sequences and again when you operate in a way 
to try to help your subcontractors out, help them be more productive, they in turn will be very grateful for that and it'll show you how the flow of construction really helps a project out. But really circling back, it was challenging of that status quo, challenging the process, trying to improve. And starting out as a new engineer, you're going to have to play that balance of challenging the status quo, but not being a brat per se. So I think one thing that you can look at is if you're making all these changes, you're making all these challenges and people are giving you positive feedback, that's showing that, hey, your efforts are being noticed and appreciated. Whereas not like, hey, this guy just doesn't know how to conform. This guy thinks he knows better than everybody else. So it's a delicate balance, but something I think will work in your favor if you do it right. And if you have any questions on any of these scenarios, please feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to reply to you. So my next project was a $15 million school project. And I think this job was the most impactful in my engineering career. But that doesn't mean that this was the easiest job that I ever had. In fact, this was the hardest job I ever had. And that job kind of taught me that maybe suffering's the greatest teacher. There were times on this job where I would work from maybe five in the morning till 12 in the morning. And I would come and do that. I would come in seven days a week. It was a grind. And most of the times when I was going through all of this, it was by myself. There was nobody else around. And I always looked at it as, this is my time when I, you know, I don't have any attachments. This is my time that I wanna invest in my own learning, my own career, my own growth. At the end of the day, that's my own experience and no one can take that away from me. And I think that was super valuable in my time. Like after that job, I was able to really see how that experience helped kind of separate me from other people who didn't have as rigorous of a career path, so to speak. But this is something that you have to want for yourself. Again, focusing on the learning, not about what everybody else is doing outside. But yeah, on that job, I taught myself Revit, really dove into the whole self-perform aspect of the concrete work and really immersed myself in the whole process Project because I had a little bit of a smaller team and I tried to learn as much as I could about all aspects of the entire job. So yeah, again, it was stressful, it was hard, it was the most hours I ever worked in my life. But the result of all of that was that I was just much better equipped to take the next few steps in my career. And especially at a time in my 20s when I had the time to do all of that and I didn't have any commitments, it's one of the best uses of my time that I can think of. So after that project, I did another nine figure high rise again. And it was at this point that all the fruits of my labor from all of my previous jobs were coming to fruition and the actual engineering side of things was a lot easier. So one of the big things that I learned on that job was that there's the technical side of the job but there's actually the personality side of the job and dealing with people. And on that job I had to learn about working with different personalities and it wasn't just in my own internal team it was also owners, designers, everybody on the entirety of the project. So as you become known as somebody who's relatively competent, capable, kind of knows what they're doing, you start to get noticed from a bunch of different entities but with all that exposure that means you're dealing with a lot of other different kinds of people. So you learn like an interior designer has a very different vibe than one of the rebar guys on site. So learning to tailor those personal skills depending on who you're talking to can become very valuable especially as you're going to start leading people. And then the job that I actually got promoted to project manager that was one of my favorite jobs because it actually taught me how great a construction project can be when everybody focuses on the common goal of what's best for the project. If you can instill that into your meetings into to your days when you're on construction projects, whether it's people in the field, the owners, the designers, if you can all get together and say, hey, what's best for the project and everybody operate in that frame. It's so great because at the end of the day, it, everything does work out. I actually didn't really have that experience my entire career where it felt like everybody was on the same team. Usually on other projects, there's always like that, you know, the owner versus the contractor, the subs versus the contractor, or there's always this fight of contracting with the architect when you're able to create that environment where everybody is working together for a common goal and yeah you'll have some arguments you'll have you'll have some disagreements but ultimately everybody is working in that direction it really does make the project that much more enjoyable to be a part of so if you can help influence your project to get to that point that's where you really want to be and finally when I did get promoted I had a team of people that depended on me for guidance and really I look back on all my experiences that I had and I was confident I was comfortable. I could help catch these people if they fell because I went through it myself before. I had the experience. I was able to advise people on what they could do best in the situation because I had been there myself. And I think when you're trying to manage people, he felt like he could go out there and feel empowered and do whatever he wanted because if he made a wrong step somewhere, he knew I would be there to help him out. And that made me feel really good that all the years that I spent, all the time that I spent was really worth it because
because it put me in that position where someone else felt comfortable with my expertise to look at me as some kind of leader in his life. So those are the projects that got me from being a very fresh engineer to becoming a project manager by 27 in my construction career. If you have any questions about any of these scenarios or you have any sort of industry questions or anything, feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to reply to you. The construction industry is a difficult one, so I will do my best to help you guys out. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you on the next video.